Hello and welcome to the 16th video in this beginner's guide to Adobe After Effects. In this tutorial, we will be looking at the fill and stroke effects we can apply to our shapes in After Effects. So over the past few episodes, we've learned the many ways we can create and modify shapes. Now it's time to look at how we can apply color and stroke effects. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how you can apply a variety of fill and stroke effects to your shapes in After Effects. So in this video, we will be covering the following topics, simple fill color, strokes, and gradients. So let's get into it. So as a beginner, it will help you to understand the variety of fill and stroke effects you can apply in After Effects. As you start to develop your own video sequences, you will find that you will use fill and stroke effects to add dynamics to your artwork. So here are the three main effects you can apply to your shapes in After Effects. A simple fill effect, a stroke effect, and a gradient fill effect. Now, there are lots of different ways you can manage these effects. In this video, I will be showing you all the ways you can experiment and get a variety of results. So let's take a quick look at some examples. Now, if you have downloaded the project folder, you can open up the document I have here. With the project folder open, click into the S2 Essential Practice folder, into folder 16, Fill and Stroke Effects, and open the Fill and Stroke Effects After Effects file, and you will have the same document I have open here. Now, if you don't have the project folder, and you want to follow along with this tutorial using this project I have prepared especially for you, you can download this project folder for a small fee. The download link with instructions is in the description. The download folder comes with lots of exercise documents we will be using on this course that have been carefully developed to aid your learning experience. The folder also comes with document resources such as videos, graphics and images you can use to build your first video presentation from scratch later on in this course. To get the full learning experience, I recommend you get the project folder. Download link with instructions is in the description. So with the project folder open, click into the S2 Essential Practice folder, into folder 16, Fill and Stroke Effects, and open the Fill and Stroke Effects After Effects file, and you'll have the same document I have open here. So before we get into applying Fill and Stroke Effects, I want to give you a quick overview of some of the Fill and Stroke Effects we can work with in After Effects, and the ways to manage them. So I first want to draw your attention over to the project panel. Here you can see I have a folder called Fill and Stroke Preview and one called Fill and Stroke Practice. For now, I need you to pay attention to the Fill and Stroke Preview folder. In this folder, we can see four compositions. Now, each of these is going to preview ways we can create and manage fill and stroke effects. So let's start with the first comp, Simple Color. So double click on the first comp here and it will appear in the composition panel. So here are some simple shapes that have been created using a variety of methods. The first is a circle created using the Shape Builder tool. The second is a shape created with the pen tool. And this last shape was brought in from Adobe Illustrator using the techniques demonstrated in a previous video. Now, if we look down in the timeline panel, we can see that each shape exists on its own layer. And we know they are shapes because they have the star icon next to their names. In After Effects, a shape layer is identified by a star icon. So when you create shapes, you can easily add simple color. So these shapes exist here in my composition and all they have applied to them is a simple fill color. So nothing too complicated here. So back in the project panel, next double click on the next comp, Stroke Examples. Now when you create shapes, you can easily add strokes with a variety of styles. Here are some more shape examples, but this time with a variety of stroke effects applied. First is a hexagon shape created using the Shape Builder tool. Next is another shape brought in from Illustrator. Next is another shape created with the Shape Builder tool. And the last shape example was created from Type. So a variety of shapes here, demonstrating how shape effects can be applied. Here we can see a variety of stroke effects ranging from simple to more complex. So lastly, back in the project panel, next, double click on Gradient Examples. Now, when you create shapes, you can also add gradient effects. Here are some more shape examples, but this time with a variety of gradient effects applied. First, we have a shape made with the pen tool, a shape brought in from Illustrator, and a circle shape made with the Shape Builder tool. So, a variety of shapes here, demonstrating how gradient effects can be applied. 
Notice here on the end that we can apply a gradient effect not just to the fill of a shape, but also to a stroke. So those are some of the fill and stroke effects you can create in After Effects. Let's now take a look at how we can apply and manage fill and stroke effects like the examples we have just seen. So now I want to draw your attention back to the project panel, and this time into the folder called Fill and Stroke Practice. These are some worksheets I have put together to help you. So let's begin by double clicking on the first comp. Simple Color Worksheet. So here I have some shapes I have prepared for you, and we are going to start by applying Simple Fill Color. So let's start with the circle. So first click on the shape, and with it selected, come up to the top of the interface. Just to the right of the Tools menu should be the settings for our fill and stroke effects. This is where we can manage the fill and stroke settings applied to our shape. So where it states Fill, currently we can see the box next to this is set to black. If we look at the stroke setting next to the fill setting, we can see it's currently set to none. Right now, none of these shapes have stroke effects applied. So if we click on the black box next to Fill, up will pop the Shape Fill Color menu. From here, we can select a color. So on this occasion, I will select a red color and click OK. And that's how easy it is to change the color of a shape. So next, click on the chevron shape, and with it selected, come back up to the fill color, click on the color box and select a blue color. Easy. Next, click on the seahorse shape, come back up to the fill color, click on the color box and select an orange color. So that's how easy it is to apply fill color to your shapes in After Effects. Remember to keep an eye on the fill settings at the top of the interface. So back into the project panel, next double click on Stroke Worksheet. So again, I have some shapes I have prepared for you, but this time we are going to look at how we can apply some stroke effects to shapes. And let's start with the hexagon shape. So first, click on the shape, and with it selected, come back up to the top of the interface, click on the color fill box, and start by changing the color fill to a green color. With the green applied, this time we can come over to the right and apply a stroke. So I can do this easily by clicking on the stroke value and dragging left or right like so. This will add a stroke to the shape. Now, if I want to be specific, I can double click onto the value and type in a specific value. In this instance, I'll type in 10 and press enter. So just like with the fill color, we can click on the stroke color box and select a color from the picker. On this occasion, I'll select a blue color for the stroke. And that's how easy it is to apply a stroke and change the color. So next, click on the swan shape, come up to the fill color, Click on the color box and apply a purple color. Then come over to the stroke, but this time you'll notice something different. This time we have a question mark in the stroke color box, and as we try and drag out the stroke, it is not working. So why is this? Okay, so this time we are trying to apply a stroke to a shape brought in from Illustrator. Now it's important for you to know that a shape brought in from Illustrator is treated differently. Looking in the timeline panel, we can see that this is a shape layer, just like the previous. However, this was originally created from an illustrated document, so if we want to apply a stroke to this, we have to use a different method. Now, keep this in mind if you ever want to apply a stroke to a shape created from Illustrator. So to do this, we need to come into the timeline panel and drop down to reveal the contents of the shape layer. Once you have revealed the contents, you will see the Add button to the right of this. If we click on the Add button, we can come up and select Stroke. Upon clicking Stroke, we will now see the setting become available for Stroke. So just like we did previously, come up to the Stroke settings, click on the color box, and this time choose a yellow color. To the right of this, you can now click and drag to increase the stroke, or double click to type in a specific value. Here I will double click and type in 30, and there we have the stroke. So remember, when you create a shape using the Shape Builder tool, you can easily apply a stroke, but when working with a shape created from Illustrator, you will have to use the Add button down in the layer settings. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. Now, in After Effects, you can apply a dashed effect to a stroke. So let's click on the next shape, and with it selected, come back up to the top of the interface, and let's click on the color box fill and start by changing the color to a light purple color. With the color fill applied, this time we will come over to the right and apply a stroke. Now, this shape was created using the Shape Builder tool, so this time the stroke setting will be easily available. So just like earlier, we will drag out the stroke 
and I'll set this to 10 and change the stroke color to red. So now our stroke is applied, we can now add a dashed effect. To do this, we need to come into the timeline panel and drop down to reveal the contents of the shape layer. So come into the layer, toggle down to reveal the contents, then toggle down again to reveal the shape, then toggle down again until you can see the stroke option. Here is where we will need to add the dashed settings. So toggle down stroke, and now we can see all the options available. From here, we can also edit the color and size, just like at the top of the interface. At the bottom of the stroke option, we can see dashes. So to add a dash, simply click the plus button to the right of dashes. And upon click, you will add a dashed line. And here we can customize the settings. If I click and drag out on the dash settings, we can specify how big the dashes are. And if we tweak the offset, we can change the orientation of the dashes. Now, if you want to control the space between the dashes, if you click back on the plus button again, you will see a new gap option appear. So if we toggle this, we can increase the space between the dashes like so. So that's how easy it is to apply a dashed line to a shape. Now, there is something else you should know about dashed lines. In After Effects, you can add more than one dash to a stroke. So let's see how this works with the next shape. So I'll press V to activate the selection tool and click on the next shape. So with it selected, come back up to the top of the interface, click on the color fill box and start by changing the color fill to an orange color. With the color fill applied, come over to the right and apply a stroke. Now, this shape was created using the pen tool, so this time the stroke settings will be easily available. So just like earlier, we will drag out the stroke, and I'll set this to 10 and change the stroke color to a dark purple. Okay, so now our stroke is applied, we can now add a dashed effect. So back in the timeline panel, toggle down to reveal the contents of the shape layer, and keep toggling down until we see the stroke settings. To add a dash, simply click the plus button to the right of dashes, and upon click, you will add a dashed line. So I'll set the dash here to 100, and just like earlier, I'll click the plus icon again to activate the gap option, and I'll set this to 100. So right now, we have a dashed stroke applied, but like the stroke applied to our previous shape, the ends of each dash have hard corners. In this instance, we are going to apply rounded corners, so on the stroke settings, we will see an option called line cap. Currently, this is set to butt cap. If I click on this drop down, we can change it to round cap. Upon click, our dashes are now rounded. Easy. Now, if we come and click the plus icon again next to dashes, upon click, we will see a dash two option appear. On this occasion, I'll drag the value down to zero, which gives us this dot effect. Now, if I wanted to, I could keep clicking the plus button to add more dashes, but for now, I'll just leave it as it is. So that's how to apply strokes to shapes and how to get this interesting looking dash stroke effect to your strokes. So back in the project panel, next double click on Stroke Worksheet 2. So this time, I have some shapes that were created from type. Now this example is a little different from the previous shapes. Looking in the composition panel, here we can see three letter shapes. But if we look in the timeline panel, we can only see one shape layer. Keep in mind, when you create shapes from type, they will exist in one shape layer. So applying fill and stroke effects to shapes like this is a little different. So let's take a quick look. So if we want to apply a quick color fill to all the letter shapes, we can simply select the shape layer, come up to fill and select a color like so. However, if you want to change the color of the individual letter shapes, you will have to do this in the timeline panel. So back in the timeline panel, toggle down the layer settings to reveal the contents of the shape layer, and this time, in the contents, we can see a part for each letter. Let's start with the letter Y. So if we toggle this down, we can see the individual settings for this letter Y shape. If I toggle down the fill settings, we can click on the colored square and select a light blue color, and this will only apply to the letter Y shape. So we can do this for the rest of the letter shapes. If I toggle down the settings for letter O, we can come into the fill options and set the color to a light red. Likewise with the last shape layer. If we come into the fill settings, we can change the color to a light yellow. So to edit the individual color settings, we need to set that in the individual fill settings for each letter shape. Now to apply a stroke to each individual part is fairly straightforward. First, we need to select the shape part in the setting. 
We can then come up to the top of the screen and click and drag on the stroke size option, and that will apply a stroke. So we can select the O layer part down in the layer settings, come up to the stroke and drag one out like so, and the same for the exclamation mark. Now to tweak the color and settings of the stroke, we again need to do this in the shape layer options. So back down in the timeline layer for the letter shape, if we toggle down the stroke option, here we can change the stroke color to a light pink. For the next letter shape, we can toggle the stroke options and change the color to a dark purple. And for the last letter shape, we can toggle the stroke option and change the color to a gray. Simple. So with our strokes applied, we can now add dash effects. So to the O letter shape layer, I'll come back to the stroke options. And using the same technique as shown earlier, I'll click the plus icon to add a dash. I'll hit the plus icon again to add the gap option and set the dash to 50 and the gap to 80. On this occasion, I'll hit the plus button again to add another dash, and I'll set this to 10. To finish off, I'll come to the line cap option, click this and choose round cap, and that will add nice round ends to my stroke lines. So for the last letter shape, I'll come into the stroke settings, click the plus button twice to add a dash and a gap option. Here, I'll set the dash to 30, the gap to 60, and click the type shape to deselect. So that's how you manage fill and stroke settings for multiple shapes on a single shape layer. Now, if for whatever reason you want to turn a stroke off on one of the layers, let's say the Y shape, I can come into the options for that particular shape part and simply toggle the visibility off for the stroke option, like so. Easy. So let's now move on to the last color effect. So back in the project panel, next double click on Gradient Worksheet. So here I have three shape examples a shape created with the pen tool, a shape brought in from Illustrator, and a shape created with the Shape Builder tool. So here we are going to apply some gradient effects. So let's start with the first shape. So first, click on the shape, and with it selected, come up to the top of the interface, and this time, instead of clicking on the color box next to fill, this time we are going to click on the word fill. When you click on this, a fill options box will appear. And it's from here where you can choose to set the color fill to none, a solid fill, a linear gradient, or a radial gradient. On this occasion, we can select the linear gradient and click OK. Next, we will click back into the fill color box, and this time we will see the gradient editor. So it's from here where we can choose the colors to make up the gradient. At the top, we can see the two color parts to our gradient. If we click the first color on the left, we can then click a color below to set it. On this occasion, I'll select a blue color. Next, I'll click the second color of the gradient. Once happy with my gradient colors, I'll click OK. So now we have a gradient effect applied. Now if we look closely on the shapes, as well as the bounding box, we can see these little handles. These represent the handles for the gradient. Now if we carefully click and drag these, we can alter the gradient effect like so. We can set the gradient from top to bottom, or from left to right, or at an angle. Easy. Now, if we want to change the color of the gradient, simply come back up and click on the fill color square to bring back the gradient editor. Now, if you want to add another color to the mix, simply move the mouse cursor near the gradient editor at the top until it changes to a hand icon and click once. This will add a new color, which you can of course select and choose another color. On this occasion, I'll pick a red and click OK. So that's how we can apply a gradient effect easily to a shape. Now let's try with a shape brought in from Illustrator. So I'll select the shape, come up and click Fill. I'll select Linear Gradient, click OK, and there it is. Now notice it's applied the same gradient effect applied to the previous shape. So back up to Fill, click on the color box, and we can take away the middle color by clicking on the color picker and dragging it away. Then we can select the other gradient colors and change them. Click OK and apply the new gradient. Now remember to look for those gradient handles, and I'll click and drag these to alter the direction of the gradient, and I'll click and drag the line from top to bottom like so. So now I'll come and click on the last shape, and this time I'll click on Fill and select Radial Gradient and click OK. So just like with the linear gradient, we get these handles, which I can click and drag the outer handles to expand the gradient effect like so. I'll click on the Fill Color Square and change the gradient colors, and now I have a nice radial gradient applied. So now I want to apply a stroke. So just like earlier, 
I'll come up to the stroke and drag out the size. Click on a color and change it, and then click OK. So we applied the gradient effect to the solid shape by clicking on the word fill and choosing the option. This time, if we click the word stroke, we will get the same option as we did for fill. Here we can choose a solid fill, a linear gradient or a radial gradient. On this occasion, I'll select linear gradient and click OK. Upon click, we will see our new gradient applied to the stroke. So up in the color box for the stroke, I'll click and just like with the solid fill, we can set the colors. Now, if we look closely, we can see another set of handles, but this time for the stroke. So I'll carefully select these and drag them to change the angle. Notice this time that for the stroke, we have these dashed lines to differentiate it from the gradient fill. So I'll carefully drag these out to alter the gradient direction. Easy. So that is how you can apply fill, stroke and gradient effects to your shapes in After Effects. Now, in a previous episode, we undertook a simple animation exercise where we moved a circle shape from left to right across a straight path. Now, there may be occasions where you don't want to animate something in a straight line. Perhaps you want to animate something along a more rounded path. Now, in a previous episode, we learned how to create paths. Now, in After Effects, we can use these paths to animate things like images and shapes across. So, instead of animating in a straight line, we can animate along a particular custom path. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to animate along a path in After Effects. So, see you in the next video.